The future is going to be absolutely wild. One day, you're going to be able to sit in your house and talk to an AI bot and essentially ask it to produce a movie for you. All right, movie GPT, I want you to create a new version of the Titanic that's actually a comedy through and through and stars people like Joe Rogan, Kevin Hart, and Morgan Freeman just to spice it up. And the AI would be able to do it for you. Today, I'm aiming to give you guys a glimpse into that future. Essentially, we're combining two cutting-edge AI technologies, text-to-video generation and text-to-audio generation. Most of the video stuff was generated by an AI known as Google's Imogen Video. Now, this generative model we don't exactly have direct access to, but Google did a whole paper about it and a nice demo site, so I downloaded a few of the clips from the demo site. Still, it is all entirely AI-generated video, and the rest of the clips are generated by an AI known as Model Scope Video, which we do have access to. I will warn you, it's much worse than Google Imogen, but at least we have access to it. Now, on the audio front, all of the audio was generated by Audio LDM. This is an AI model that honestly is pretty darn good. It is the best AI audio generation that I know of that we actually have access to. So all of the video and all of the audio are generated just by text descriptions. This is the first I've seen anyone do this, so without further ado, let's dive into this visual and auditory AI generated experience.
So while this little demo was very, very crude, I think it's truly an example of what is going to be possible in the future. A lot of these clips, you know, they don't really look that great. You can tell all of them are AI generated and a lot of the audio isn't great either. But with that said, it is pretty incredible. I honestly like the chewing demo with the giraffe and the microwave. The prompt for this one, I made sure to try to have it include the microwave in the actual audio itself, and you can kind of hear it if you listen close enough. Listen for a slight hum in the background of the video. You could definitely hear it. Now, each one of these Google Imagen clips was about 5 seconds long, and audio LDM output 10 second long clips. So there was a little bit of audio synchronization editing going on in some of the clips. Like the water droplet one, for example, obviously all of the water sounds were generated by audio LDM, but I just matched it up so it fit the clip. Like this one, for example. So there was some slight human intervention. I think my favorite clip had to be this one of the bear. I mean, it just sounds so much like he is the one who is skating along that ice. It was just one of those circumstances where the audio generation matched up really well with the video generation. In the future, these models are definitely going to be combined into one cohesive thing so that the audio always matches the video generation. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what the hell this clip was. This was supposed to be a can crushing and model scope just could not, for the life of itself, generate a can being crushed. I mean, it does almost sound like the can is being beaten. And some of the clips here, I actually did try to imagine a creative way that the image could sound because a time lapse like Imogen Video generated in this clip doesn't necessarily have any sound. So I thought, what does this sprout growing actually sound like? And I just essentially prompted audio LDM to say like, oh, like a rubber stretching sound. And I think it turned out really, really well. It's got like this dramatic, growing effect to it almost. And there were some layered audio generations as well. Audio LDM doesn't necessarily have the ability to layer audio too well. It can in some circumstances, like it always puts like wind behind certain audio effects very, very well, because that's easy. But in this case, there was just way too much going on, so I actually had to generate the sound of the ocean separately from the steps walking, and then combine them together. It turned out really, really good in the end.
I don't know about you guys, but I thought that this clip was kind of hilarious and cute in a weird AI generated sense. Like it's trying so hard to generate the horns beeping here, but it just can't get them right. And I like that they're almost musical too. <laughs> If you guys didn't know what this clip was, this was supposed to be like the inside of a cathedral, so I just did like this hollow sounding echoiness for it. It is really, really insane to me how well this already kind of works together. Like, if you didn't know any better, you would just think that this is one video generation model, not two entirely separate AI models from two entirely separate backgrounds combined together to create, well, a video and audio clip as a whole. I don't know, if this doesn't get you guys excited for the future, I don't know what will, because I am so excited for fully AI-generated movies that are specifically tuned to your tastes. You might be really unimpressed by something like Google's image and video. They're very mushy, they're kind of melding in and out, so you might be like, well, this is gonna take forever and ever to actually generate something like a complete movie. But it's actually not nearly as far off as you might think. Let's go ahead and take a trip back to to not even a year ago with Midjourney V1. This is a generation by Midjourney V1. The first iteration of Midjourney, it honestly looks even worse than the Imogen video clips. Now this is Midjourney V2, released a few months later. And then we've got Midjourney version 3, which is even better, still not very cohesive. And then we get over to Midjourney version 4, where there's this huge leap and increase in quality. That's how these technologies work, they go into this like spike upwards. And then we have Midjourney version 5, where now you can almost barely tell if something was AI generated in a lot of circumstances like this, and I'm sure you guys have seen what Midjourney version 5 can do with actual realism. It's a very, very realistic looking image. And we got to this realism in less than a year with text to image generation. In fact, Midjourney's generations have gotten so realistic that Midjourney has ended their free trial because they say the new influx of users have been generating deep fake images because they are very worried about creating misinformation with their very realistic AI image generation software. And we can also see how this could be a very, very very major issue when AI video generation gets this good. People are pretty upset about the free trial being ended though. Trial users of Midjourney did not even have access to Midjourney version 5, which is this realistic version. A lot of people are just saying it's kind of a cash grab to make people have to pay for Midjourney. Oh, and by the way, guys, just in case you didn't think AI voice cloning or voice generation was here yet, yeah, this tech is already well into deep fake territory. Listen, Literally all I have to do here is submit like 10 minutes of me speaking into the mic and my voice is replicated in a way that is almost flawless. This one is called Eleven Labs, by the way, and it's five buckaroos a month to be able to clone 10 AI voices. How do you think all of those people are making the hilarious memes involving celebrities and presidents gaming with each other? Just you wait. Pretty soon a little robot pal is going to be zipping in and out and all around your house with a voice that's just like this and a robo brain that's even smarter than GPT-4, which was able to pass the frickin' bar exam. So yeah, viewers, in conclusion, AI technology is wild, and you can expect things to only get even crazier in the next 10 years or so, but I'll be here to cover it and keep you guys updated on the latest tech, so subscribe and check out the Discord for more AI experiments, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.